graveyard because we struggle, we have to fight through stuff. Sometimes we think we need to innovate, but we don't know. And things are just happening so fast that you get a little bit overwhelmed. So I know as a business coach that SMEs make the mistake of thinking that they can wing their way to success. And unfortunately, everything that's worth doing is hard and requires a process. And um, many business owners think I've got a great product, so it will sell. I'm sorry to tell you, but that is not the case. And that is exactly why I've created what I like to call the advocacy engine, which aims to help business owners sim systemize and simplify the process of business growth. Good morning and welcome to the very first live Q&A I've had this year. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Odette De Beer, and I'm so happy to have you here this morning. After sharing some insights on transforming customer experience and the power of the advocacy engine in creating unforgettable moments and experiences, I've had a couple of um, questions come through and I thought it would be useful to have this question and answer session live here on LinkedIn. And if you're on Facebook, we're there too. We are going to dive deeper into topics that create loyalty. So today's conversation is all about creating loyalty in your business. One of the first questions that I've received is, hey, Odette, could you please explain more about the advocacy engine and its role in business growth? So for those of you who don't know what the advocacy engine is, the advocacy engine is my system or process that I've created to help businesses systemize business growth, systemize customer experience. It relies on a couple of core elements, the first of which is clarity, second is accountability, and third is consistency. So those are the foundations of the advocacy engine. When you have clarity, accountability, and consistency, you build trust, and that trust ultimately leads to loyalty. That loyalty becomes advocacy or brand evangelism. And once you're at that point, you have to be paying attention to continuous improvement and obviously excellence. So it's an engine or it's a concept that I believe in. And like I said, it's built on clarity, accountability and consistency. When we apply these principles, our businesses can transform satisfied customers into passionate advocates. The advocacy engine is super duper important for business growth because it leads to increased customer loyalty and referrals and ultimately a stronger brand reputation. One of the foundations of a strong brand is customer loyalty. One of the foundations of a strong business is loyalty. And of course, when they advocate and recommend you. But we all know that the world is constantly evolving and that's why we can't just sit on our blessed behinds. We have to continuously improve and that's why continuous improvement and innovation is so important. So when you do that, you achieve excellence, which makes you the obvious choice. And the last part of the advocacy engine can only be done if you've actually connected with your customers. So those of you who, who have been following me for a while, I have a book called From Heart to Bottom Line, and it's all about making a personal deep connection with your customers. When we deeply connect with our customers and we care about them and we care for them, then we can create experiences that are unforgettable, that resonate with them. And only when you understand your customer, are you able to continuously improve? Are you able to innovate? because there's a lot going on in the world. And the reality is our customers sometimes don't know what they want yet. And it's our jobs when we understand them to connect with them and to say, hey, I've noticed this. How about this for solving that problem? So I hope that helps you understand that the advocacy engine a little bit more. The next question we have is as a small business owner, how can I leverage these principles in my business without significant investment. Now, I love this question because often business owners, small to medium sized business owners think that customer experience is only for large corporate organizations. They often believe that customer experience is an expensive process that only the big brands do. And I'm here to tell you that is simply not the case. The advocacy engine is not about the size of your budget, but the depth of your commitment to customers. Customers will care about you when they know that you care about them. 
Small businesses can make a big impact by personalizing their customer interactions, quickly addressing any issues that arise and ensuring consistency in a positive experience. Consistency is key. Think about Jekyll and Hyde from the uh, Hulk movies. Nobody likes Jekyll and Hyde because you never know what's coming. You never know what to expect. One of the bigger brands, sorry for shaming you, McDonald's, that's inconsistent is McDonald's. Today you will get a burger that is nicely packed together and depending on what the mood of the staff is tomorrow, you will get a burger that's upside down or your lettuce are perhaps somewhere else. And that inconsistency means that customers never know what to expect. Now think about it like this. If your customer doesn't know what to expect, how can they recommend you? I spoke about this in a previous podcast. Recommendation comes from consistency and knowing what to expect. When I recommend somebody, I am saying I'm attaching my name to their brand. I'm endorsing them. Therefore, their reputation becomes my reputation and vice versa. Now, if I were to recommend someone who is fabulous today and absolutely atrocious tomorrow, I'm saying that I endorse that. I'm okay with it being great today and terrible tomorrow. That's the problem with inconsistency. So when we are consistent and we create consistent experiences, we enhance customer loyalty and word of mouth referrals because now it's easier to recommend us. And that is obviously invaluable for growth. There is a catch. You have to systemize your feedback and then you need to really listen to your customers. It's not just about listening to what they said. Henry Ford said it really well. If I asked my customers what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Now, we all know that today we're not driving faster horses. We are driving cars with more horsepower. But it's about understanding the problem that your customer has and how your product or service provides a solution for them. When we become customer centric, we become solution focused. What is the solution we can provide? And when you start looking at the problems, you can start innovating the solutions. Then it's no longer about creating a faster horse. It's about creating an electric car that works on a te Tesla battery. So when you're asking for feedback, then it requires some understanding and some digging deep, reading between the lines, what's not being said to understand what their needs are so that you can create solutions to their problems. Our next question is, can you share a success story of a business that transformed their customer experience? So on this particular one, I actually have a couple in mind. One of a, a much larger organization was an insurer that I worked with. And we used a business problem, which was a debtor's rate. And we applied customer experience principles and behavioral economic principles to the problem. So we crafted a solution. We crafted a customer experience around increasing the customer payment rate. Because when you become customer focused, who knows that your language changes? So we changed from a debtor's rate to a customer payment rate, which was very low. It was 28% of customers who said they were going to pay actually made their payment. And when we crafted the experience, we considered what they saw beforehand, the information they needed to make a decision, the process that they go through in order to buy from this insurer, as well as how do we go about getting them to actually commit and make the payment. So once we did that, we were able to change from 28% customers who paid to 78% of customers who paid. Now, for those of you who have a problem with collecting your debts, guys, it's as simple as creating an experience and understanding your customers. I say it's simple because when you really want to do it, you will find a solution, but it does require a time investment. I recently worked with two churches. The first is fairly large. They went through a leadership shift and saw the opportunity to revolutionize their experience. Now, some of you are going, why would a church need to create a customer experience? Well, it's quite simple. Generally, churches are focused on the 90-minute service on a Sunday, which is always awesome, always Holy Spirit-filled, and always fantastic. But there are interactions before and after the service that the congregation, or the customers in this case, 
interact with and those influence the experience they influence the way that the customer sees it some of you would have seen a post from me earlier on that said customer experience if i could distill it into one word i would say it's a feeling and that is still my conviction i believe that customer experience is a feeling the way that we make our customers feel is what determines whether or not they buy from us whether or not they recommend us to someone else. So these churches both had the sense that they needed to improve their experience. The larger organization went through a systematic process where we understood the gaps in their experience. We understood the inconsistencies, the things that come up. We took into consideration what people hear, what they see, what they smell, and how that ultimately makes them feel. And then we started highlighting what are the issues. Some of the issues were organizational issues like risk management. Some of the issues were just the flow of things. Some issues were just the way that people were trained. And it's a very important point. Customer experience from a customer perspective is about feelings, but customer experience from an organizational perspective is about how we train our people. It's about the processes in our organization. You can't get away from processes. It's about the systems. It's about the touch points. You'll know that customer experience is all about touch points. So understanding each touch point and how that plays into the life of the customer and then designing an experience that fits around what we want customers to feel. Now, that large organization is still busy updating their experience. They are still busy implementing customer experience. And that is to say that customer experience is a long-term game you are not going to implement an experience in one day and set and forget it. Customer experience is an evolving, continuous process. The second organization was a smaller church and they wanted to improve the way that the public perceives them. So there were some outside, external building, physical things that needed to be addressed. And they also wanted to create a better experience for mums, in particular mums with babies, the way they experience a service for those of you who do go to church and those of you who've been in charismatic churches, sometimes it can be hard for moms with babies to be in the service. What do you do? Where do you put them? How does that work? Because we don't want to exclude anyone. Um, it's important for us to understand that we want to create a holistic experience. So that means that you need to understand the various personalities of your customers. It's not a one size fits all. But it does require an understanding of the different profiles, the different groups of people that attend your business, or in this case, your church. And then it's important to think about the holistic experience. What do they see? What do they hear? What do they smell? And what do they feel? If you have a textile store, um, you want to think about what they feel. If you have a restaurant, when I sit at your table and it's greasy, that grosses me out. My physical senses are affected by it and I probably won't come there again. So those are very important things that we need to consider. And it doesn't require a big budget. It requires us to think about the experience that we want to deliver and then incrementally make those changes. It's not about boiling the ocean, as my husband would say. It's about making small incremental changes over time, consistently applied which creates phenomenal experiences. So I hope those were useful. The next question we have is how do you recommend businesses measure the impact of their customer experience improvements? This is a poignant topic because businesses are always concerned about the bottom line. Again, from heart to bottom line. You don't have a business if there isn't a bottom line. If you're not making money, are you really a business is probably the best question. And customer experience measurement helps you understand the various parts of customer experience and how it relates to your business. Now, there are some universal measures that I would recommend you apply in your business. For every single business you want to be measuring customer satisfaction score or CSAT, it's as simple as asking your customers to rate their satisfaction of your product or service immediately after a purchase or an interaction. It gives you insight and immediate feedback. It also gives you an, an ability to quickly adjust if you are reviewing those feedback scores. 
The second one is net promoter score. I'm aware that there is a debate about around NPS. Do we, don't we, is it still valid? For me, it's about the measure that it provides. So it gives you the likelihood that one of your customers will recommend your business to others. It's a strong indicator of growth potential and customer satisfaction. Having said that, I've seen a couple of businesses do it wrong. Your net promoter score should start with zero and end with 10. And on that spectrum, you need to give the customers an option to rate it. You can't say it's an NPS if it's a one to five scale. You also can't say it's an NPS if it's a one to, to nine scale. It's zero to 10. There's a system behind it. There's lots of thought that went into it. There's a whole methodology behind it. Unless you have measured and done the statistical analysis of a new measure, I wouldn't recommend you messing with that. Of course, one of, one of the most important ones that we often forget is the customer effort score. Now, customer effort score measures how easy it is for your customers to get their issues resolved, to buy from you, to use your product, to spend time in your space. The lower the effort typically correlates to higher customer loyalty. Why is it important? Think about the organizations that you've dealt with. Customer experience is a feeling. And if we are causing frustration, that feeling is negative. Therefore, we associate your business or your experience with a frustrating feeling or a negative feeling. That's obviously not what we want. So we want to make sure that we remove the frustration, we remove the pain points. This is where you go, what are the things that we are doing that potentially could cause friction, pain points, or frustrations? For service-based businesses, the typical one that almost always comes up is asking the customer for the same information more than once. And I'm talking about in the same interaction, not even when they phone you back a second time. For a physical business or a product-based business, how easy is your product to use? How easy is it to buy? If you are selling shoes online, how easy is it to return the product if there was something wrong with it? It's about understanding the effort that your customer has to apply to use your product, to buy from your business or to use your services. I, in the beginning of the year, generally buy labels for my kids for school. And since we're new in Australia, not new anymore, but new-ish, I figured I'd better find someone else to do it because flying it in from South Africa is just not viable. So I found a local business that does it online and I tried to go onto their website. I tried to order what I needed for my children. I have two kids, so I need two sets of tags that go on all of their things. And unfortunately, I was not in that interaction able to add both my children. I wasn't able to buy two packets with two different names. And when I finally decided, okay, I need these tags, I'll just check it out twice. I was not able to get out of my cart. I was in a cart, but the cart couldn't check out. And it's a simple example, but it's an example of what are the things that your customers go through that frustrates them, that causes pain points, that causes friction, which results in them not buying from you. I never bought the labels. I decided to wing it. Don't lose a sale because you didn't walk the process. There is nothing more valuable than walking the process your customer would have walked the same way they would walk it. You will learn so much. Invest the time to understand the process they go through. The next measure is retention rates. Tracking how long customers use your product, your service, or continue with you a high retention rate often indicates satisfied customers and a successful business model. We want to keep our bucket full. If you think about your business as a bucket, there are holes in your bucket. The bigger the holes, the more customers fall through. And then obviously you've got new customers coming in. Now we all know that acquiring a new customer costs six times as much as it is just to make a sale to an existing customer. So while they are in your bucket, you want to be able to sell more to them. So you need to be able to upsell. You need to be able to cross sell. If something happens, you need to be able to downsell. These are all things that you need to have in your business for long-term sustainability. And then you want to see how long you can keep them. That also talks about customer lifetime value. How long is your customer with you? And in the time that they are with you, 
What is the value that they represent to your business? That's why Gene Bliss talks about the customer asset. Your customer is an asset to your business, and without your customer, there is no business. Let's just get that straight. Now, there are a couple of other measures. We don't have all that much time left, so I won't go into those measures. I'll ask, answer the last question for today, and that is, what is the first step businesses can take to implement the advocacy engine principles? I love this because it's not about boiling the ocean again. The first step is conducting a thorough assessment of your current customer experience across all touch points. Go through the process, walk the process, get someone in like myself, I do those assessments, to understand what the existing customer experience looks like and understand the gaps or the holes in your business. Look for areas where you can enhance clarity in your communication, clarity in your product, clarity in the way that you interact with your, your staff and your customers, accountability, making sure that everyone takes ownership of the experience and making sure that it happens consistently. Obviously, those things require for you to have measures in place. There needs to be control parameters. You need to be measuring those things. And then involve your team in the process. If you have a team, involve them in the process of brainstorming actionable steps to integrate your principles into your daily operations. If you don't have a team, sit down, walk the process that your customer will walk, and then just brainstorm it. Use sticky notes. This is the process. What are the issues? And start thinking about the ways in which you can address those issues, reduce the friction, or remove them altogether. It really is about creating a culture that prioritizes exceptional customer experiences as the foundation for growth and loyalty. I hope you enjoyed today's live Q&A session. We'll have one of these on a monthly basis. For those of you who were on early enough, you would have seen the Business with Altitude Summit video. That was a recap from last year. We'll play it again and I'll see you in a minute. We struggle, we have to fight through stuff. Sometimes we think we need to innovate, but we don't know. And things are just happening so fast that you get a little bit overwhelmed. So I know as a business coach that SMEs make the mistake of thinking that they can wing their way to success. And unfortunately, everything that's worth doing is hard and requires a process. Many business owners think I've got a great product, so it will sell. I'm sorry to tell you, but that is not the case. And that is exactly why I've created what I like to call the advocacy engine, which aims to help business owners sim systemize and simplify the process of business growth. If you don't yet have your ticket to the Business with Altitude Summit 2024, there is a kicker at the bottom of the screen. Go to the website. Early bird tickets are currently available. They're probably at about 50 to 70% discount of the normal rate. We will be hosting the summit this year from 18 to 20 September. And this year's theme is Amplify Your Life by Amplifying Your Business. We have amazing guest speakers joining us. We are going to be talking everything from customer experience, brand and marketing, and of course, leadership. So don't miss out. Grab your tickets today so that you have your seat. There are huge bonuses um, available for those who join us at the summit. And also bring a friend, bring your business partner, bring your employees, and let's create an environment where we create businesses with altitude. So thank you so much for joining me today. And for these questions, those of you who've submitted questions, thank you so much. Remember, the journey to exceptional customer experience is an ongoing journey. And with dedication and the right strategies, you can always, with the help of the advocacy engine, achieve remarkable business growth and build loyalty in your business, which is ultimately what we want. For more insights and strategies, don't forget to follow me, to follow this channel, to find us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. Let's create some experiences that truly set us apart. Thank you so much. See you next time. Have a fantastic day.